What's up guys, F Focus, and we back on some Tarkov. So this is a much needed video for some of you uh, lower level players out there, and some people just want some extra help. So I'm not even going to stay in this intro very long, we're just going to jump straight into it. This is just uh, the patch 0 0.5.0 .0 help full video tips whatever you want to call it dude it's it's just to help you know everybody out to get to that high end gear and that late game all right fellas so to start this list off it's going to be talking about folding stocks now i know that you can just right click on it and then click fold if it's in your hands you'll fold it when you get out of your inventory or you know vice versa if it's that's how you that's how everybody folds a stock but if you're in the heat of a battle, maybe you're firing at somebody. Maybe your stock's folded because it was a gun that you picked up out of somebody's bag or something like that. And you just need to unfold it. Or maybe you want to fold it. Hell, I don't know. If you actually press Alt-L, it'll fold it in-game. Uh, I, I went over this uh, a video ago, but I just wanted to let you guys know. I wanted to throw that out there like first. Um, and then also just to talk about some dynamic... Uh, storage and stuff when you're in a raid I don't see very many people do this uh, when you're not in a raid you can take off magazines and grips and they'll only be one block high so you can stack a lot more guns that way but just for the sake of this we're gonna say we're in a raid you killed somebody maybe you have two other guns here and a gun in your uh, on your back and obviously yours on your sling and you need to fit it here but if I were to take this and try to slide it over I have no room so an easy way that you can do is just inspect it and discard the stock, okay? You don't need the stock, and then that'll allow you to drag it over here in for an AKM and whatnot. Um, M4s uh, are, they're only a 2x4 without a suppressor, and then uh, a 2x5 with a suppressor, so you can stock those just fine. But, you know, at, for the sake of AKMs and AK-74Ns, they're, they're really long compared to uh, an M4, so just discard the stock and you can drag it over into a 2x5 and so, uh, so you don't have to stack it long ways. Oh. Alright guys, so we're going to start off with the second tip. It's just going to be talking a little bit about quests. I don't want to go too in depth with it because I'm sure there's a million videos out there from maybe like Devil Dog or even Cotton or Deadly Slob and those guys go hard when it comes to quests I don't go as hard with them as as long as I get my traders to the max level therapist is just a slut uh, so I'm waiting I'm not even high enough level for her, actually I haven't been able to play as much lately because of the shitty internet but as far as the traders go just watch the reputation if it's gonna dip off and just cancel somebody else's then then don't do it if I go to therapist right now there's a quest for the sawmill she wants this at the sawmill, it's on woods, and I'd love to give it to her, but then Skier goes down. But if I, if I give it to Skier, then she goes down minus 0.3, which would seriously, it would take me down to 18, 0.18. So, it's not fucking worth it. But, I mean, I, I, I want to give it to her, but then again, I don't want Skier to go down, and yada, yada, yada. And then same with this one, if I don't give her the beacon, she goes down 0.3, and this is originally Skier's quest. So, you just gotta watch out for that as far as that goes. That's why I'm like at a standstill right now. Because I don't need them to be any higher level. Prepper's level 4, Peacekeeper and Skier are both level 4. Therapist, the only thing that she gets level 4 is the item case and money case. And you can buy like Grizzlies and whatnot, which are, which are fantastic. And I will get her to level 4, but I'm gonna do the quests that don't tank off and just crush everybody else. So... Like I said, just watch the reputation, be smart about it. If all you want is therapist leveled up and you don't care about skier, then fine. It's kind of like a personal preference, but for me, I like to keep everybody level 4, even if I don't get all the rewards from the quests. Alright, fellas. Now, tip number 3. All I'm going to say is try and avoid sprinting. Now, if you come here on Customs, which is one of the more popular maps, this is a prime target or a prime location over here especially because obviously this is a spawn so if you spawn if you decide to spawn on the custom side if you have a map and you pick that side you're going to be wanting to try and get out of here as fast as possible but at the same time you want to take your time on it uh there's been multiple times uh in my stupidness of playing this game that i was just trying to run through it and that's not ever the really the best case you can come out down through there, you can come out down through here, but if you avoid sprinting, like I'm doing right now, if I was running and I came out here, 
I jumped this and decided to run through. And there was a guy sitting right there. Because I ran and jumped this, I'm going to have to do that stop and slide thing. And by the time I can get up and look at him, if he's just not an absolute potato shot, he's going to kill me. Now this goes said for a lot of stuff. Doesn't even have to be this whole jumping right here. I could have jumped that. I could decide to run through here. And there's a guy right on the other side of this wall right here, the storage unit. And I come around this way, I see him. I gotta stop and try and shoot at him. Versus he's just sitting here. Maybe he's walking toward me. He sees me though, he can shoot at me first. Now let's just say that the guy's sitting right here. And I'm walking because I'm, I know that there's people here. So I'm walking, taking my sweet time. I can see him and shoot just as fast as he can see me and shoot. So it kind of plays out better for yourself if, if you don't sit here and just sprint around everywhere. If you watch a lot of streamers and watch a lot of players that are high enough level and have decent gear and they're bringing out decent gear, they're not running as much. They're kind of checking their corners and they're walking a lot of places of where they go because they want to have their gun ready. If you're sprinting, you can't shoot. Just like that. Literally prime example. Alright guys, so I get a lot of questions, you know, how to level up traders in this patch and whatnot. Well, just to try and rush through and put it simply for most of the traders, uh, Prapper and Peacekeeper, you can sell them weapons. Uh, so they're going to be really easy to level up because that's the, that's the easiest way to make money is selling weapons, you know, so to speak. And then the Therapist is super easy to level up because you can sell her dog tags. You can, she needs 600,000 rubles. Uh, to get to level 4 and you can get that in just a couple of days by selling her dog tags trust me it's super easy it's an easy way to make money also so make sure you're picking up dog tags but skier doesn't buy weapons dog tags or anything like that so as you can see here this triceps 14,000 rubles so I'm gonna show you guys a little trick just to get more money out of skier open up this bag I'm gonna drop this DVL this M4 and then the nice SR now if I go back in to, look at that, he'll actually buy it for 423,000 rubles. Before he'd only buy the backpack, and he won't buy those weapons by themselves, but if you shove them in the backpack, and they're not damaged enough, and they still have a, a high enough damage rating on there, or health so to speak, on the weapon, that a regular trader would buy them, then he will actually buy them. But if I was to put this AK in here, that's past the the damage threshold of it then he wouldn't buy it all the same just like the other traders but this just is an easy way to help level up skier if you're having issues just uh toss in some weapons that you don't want and then put them inside of a backpack it doesn't have to be a tricep it can be an mbss it can be a tri or it can be a scab bag and just sell it to him right or a pilgrim bag and you that's just an easy way for you to level up skier all right guys now this is gonna be talking in specific about the specter the site that I have on now, I don't really use the Hammer site or the Bravo site this patch. I just haven't yet. Um, I'm going to, so don't worry, but I just haven't yet. But as you can see, when I site down, the site is really blurry and it's big and it's taking up my entire screen real estate. This is not the way that the site is supposed to be. So how do you fix that? Well, the one fix that I've came across is to hold... Uh, control and right click to switch down to your other site and this doesn't have to be this if you're using a different site I don't know if it works on those bravos or the hammer sites because I haven't used them this patch yet but I do know that it works on the Spectre site and I've been getting questions about that so I'll switch to my top site or if you have a 45 you can switch to that and then when you switch back it's actually fixed okay this is the only way that I've found out how to fix it So if, if, there's, if anybody has any other ways, maybe to even help with the other sites, uh, please let me know. You can message me on Discord. I always have that down in the description. Or you can even post us a comment on here, and I'll favorite it. Just because this is a really big issue, and I've been getting a lot of questions over this. So again, if you're using the Spectre site, because it's my favorite site in the game, just switch to your top site and switch back, and it will be fixed. Okay? Alright guys, for the next little tip, it's going to be a two for one. So yes, you guys love and owe me. I know, don't worry, I've got you guys' back. So, to start it off, 
we're going to be talking about zeroing because I still get a bunch of questions saying, hey, how do you zero? Uh, so I definitely want to tell you guys that. Uh, and then the next thing, we're going to be talking about this uh, somewhat beautiful Trijicon ACOG site. It's not my favorite, but I do know a lot of people like it. And a really nice thing about it is from Peacekeeper, it's fairly inexpensive. It's only around 300 USD. Uh, which is cheaper than most of the other sites out there. So if you can get used to it, it's definitely a great pickup. So how do you zero? While you're ADSing, if you hit page up or page down, and you can see in the bottom right hand corner when I do it, it'll actually switch the numbers. So page up will zero it up and page down obviously zeroes it down. So that's all there is to it for zeroing. And moving on now to, for your second part or for this tip, the Trijicon ACOG site. While you're aiming down, if you played with this scope last patch, you know that it sucked dick. Uh, and it, literally, the zeroing on it is, is really bad. I'm at 50 meters right now, which is as low as you can go. And if I shoot, it's at the bottom of my triangle, which nobody wants to aim at heads at the bottom of their triangle. So, how do you make this work? Page up, or zero up, to about 150 meters. And then now when you shoot, it'll be near the top. It'll be right near the top of your, your triangle. So you don't have to worry about shooting like this anymore. You can actually aim at the very tip of the triangle. So remember, as soon as you get into a raid, go ahead and just ADS and page up to 150 meters. And you will be just spot on when it comes to hitting heads on your target. Alright guys, now this one goes hand in hand with the tip I told you. Try not to sprint as much. Um, as far as even when you're going around corners and stuff like this, you'll go around and you check. But this one also has something to do with ADSing. Now, when you ADS and you have a site like the Trijicon ACOG or even Spectre, Bravo, when you're aiming down and you're looking through the scope, you're not going to be looking at this corner right here but doing this, right? Or doing this. It's just not going to happen. However, if you have a red dot, I see people do this all the time. It happens on streams. I've seen Devil Dog do it. I've seen Cotton do it. I've seen so many people do it. And I, I haven't figured out why. I've done it a couple times uh, because I'm an idiot. But as far as all that goes, you know, it. I see a guy in this corner right here. Okay, maybe he was over here. He pushed over there. But I'm I'm waiting for him. A lot of people will sit here, and they'll do this. They'll wait for him, or if it's further down, it's at that corner right there or something, or maybe at the train car. They'll sit here and do this. Because they're centering their crosshair on their screen. And I understand that if he were to pop out on either side, you can kind of flick over to whichever side you need to go to. And this way, your scope's not in your way. Your reticule's not in your way. The, the actual red dot housing's not in your way. But at the same time, you have less of a second to find him. Okay? So here's my advice. Here's the last little tip right here. Have your red dot ready. Have your reticule ready. If he pushed out on the side, you think he's going to push out again? Have your, have your actual reticule on there. He's on the corner of the building. Have your actual reticule on there. Don't be looking down waiting so you can try and flick up and get him really quick. Have your reticule ready. So if he does peek out, you can just shoot and get him. There's absolutely no reason why you should have your reticule anywhere else other than where you think they're going to come. If he it may come on this side or this side, put your reticule there. Put it right here. Switch back and forth if you need to. Do whatever you need to do, but have it ready. Alright, fellas, so this one's going to be focused more on shoreline, because right now, this is like the go-to map for everybody. So, I just want to put you guys in, into perspective where we are. That's the bunker down there. That's the old extract point. Oh, or the, one of the old extract points on the, the old shoreline map. So, if you come up here, this fence never used to be laid down. It used to be up. You could walk on the wood, but you couldn't actually go in there. So... Now that you guys know where we are, come inside that area right here, and this is considered the West Wing, okay? So there's going to be this little downed shelving right here. That's how we're going to go in, and I'm going to show you guys just some secret spots. Other streamers have talked about it, and I'm sure you guys have seen other streamers actually do it. So this really isn't going to be too much of a surprise, but for those of you guys that don't know or don't haven't seen them do it or maybe those of you that have and you just want to know kind of exactly how to do it the first big room i want to show you guys is to come up here to the third floor run through this building and just kind of go across the deck right here 
so you can bypass that little blockade. Okay. Then you want to go in this room right here. It's the 321 room. Um, if you have the key, great. If you don't, that's fine. Come in here though, and this this ledge right here, this balcony, is how you want to do it. Now, every, a lot of people know that you want to drop down below, but a lot of people don't know kind of the technique and secret on how to do it. So, when you jump up, kind of look toward this wall and jump up so you don't accidentally jump off, right? Jump up here, and then suit, before I even move, I hit my slow walk button. So you can see down the bottom left, I'm moving as slow as I can right now. And I'll inch my way over until I pop back up on my other foot, and I turn my slow walk off, okay? And you want to be literally looking parallel with this, this building right here. You want to be parallel with the actual building. You don't want to look like this, or you don't want to look out to my left. You just want to look down at where you're standing on this ledge. And with your slow walk turned off and you're moving as fast as you can now, you want to move left really quick and then right as soon as you start to fall. And you'll land down on here. I know a lot of people talk about it, but not very many people have actually kind of shown how to do it. You can do that every time and it's super easy. This is if you don't have the key for these rooms. You got some money on the table. Um, you got this weapon box here. There's usually a lot of... Uh, you got that golden star, but there's usually a lot of med supplies here. Maybe a grizzly on top of this box, so make sure you check that. And then when you come through this room, you got two weapon cabinets. It's only 150 or 133 here, and nothing. A lot of times though, you'll find DVL tins very easy in here. And of course, you got some more money on this table, and then you'll usually have some money right here and whatnot. So this room is extremely good. I found a VSS twice on top of this box right here, so make sure you come into the bathroom and check. It's it's insanely overrated. You need to come through here because of just all these spawns. Even this 153, like I would probably take it until I found something better, which is was super easy to find something better. So you're gonna have to jump off if you don't have the keys, which is fine. Just go ahead and jump off like I did. But remember, go up to the third floor, bypass the first barricade, and you can drop down just like exactly how I showed you guys. Now the next thing you want to do is go to the second floor. Okay. Run past all the barricades. Alright. You're going to have to jump this barbed wire right here. Alright. So here's the set of stairs. You want to go right past the set of stairs, and as soon as you go down to the next hallway, you'll see the little glass tunnel to go over to the other wing. You'll see this door right here. It's got some barbed wire in it, and it's got this downed little bookshelf right in front of it. Go to the very next door. That'd be 206. Come through here, and you got some barbed wire. Now you can try and jump on the ledge and walk across, or you can literally just go through the barbed wire. You're gonna at least hit it probably once. But you come through here and you got two weapon cases. Okay. Alright, so that's not all that's over here, but that's a that's a large portion of just kind of the loot that most people actually pass up. So we're gonna go through the uh, the little tunnel that connects. You're gonna pass all this bullshit. Go over this right here. Um always come in here and check for a key spawn right there. It's it's rare but you never know, you may get lucky one one of these times. Go up the next flight of stairs. Check this for quest items. Uh, like Devil Dog said, I'm not taking credit for that. That's all Devil Dog. Um, but I'll check this right here. And then, if you can, uh, check these if you're relatively one of the first ones. Uh, but I, I never really stay in this open area with all the windows, especially next to one of the fire escapes. Because it makes me uneasy. It's just really easy to kill people like that. I've done it a couple times. If you have this key, definitely come in here and check it. Hopefully there's something good on the table. I'll show you footage of whenever my buddy Salty Tyler and I were playing. Yeah, look at this. There's two golden lions here. Or bronze lions here. And there's a clock. It's so easy to get money when you come into this room. Gold chain, everything, man. So if you can, definitely get this key. It's such a good key. It's 310 key for east wing. Now, with that said, you're going to move past this and this doorway to the right, right before you get to the barricade, come through it. There's a weapon box here. I don't know how many times I've searched this weapon box and there's been a full AK-74N with ammo inside there. Okay? It's not going to give it to me this time, I bet. But you come through here and you can search and check this because I don't know why, but nobody checks it. Absolutely nobody checks it. 
And then the next thing, of course, is this room right here. You can actually find uh, gold chains in his ears. So be sure to check inside of his ears. And then be sure to check around here because there's usually some gold chains or chainlets around this side. And you can check his body if you want. Alright guys, so I always get questions on my Discord about, hey, how do you have so much fort armor? How do you have so many kivers? Well, if you don't have skier level 4, then you can't buy kivers yet. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. When you don't go in without a kiver, uh, it makes it a, such a high risk type of scenario because one shot in the head and you're dead. Uh, so if you want to get those kivers because you don't have the traders leveled up and... Uh, obviously if you don't have skier level 4, you can't trade gold chains for forts, you don't have any fort armor, you're just rolling packer or something, you want to get fort. Um, the easiest way that I've found out to get it is to go on factory and wait till the last, like, couple minutes. Um, a bunch of scavs will spawn. How you know that it's actually working, um, or you'll shoot a scav, uh, after the raid's been going on for quite a long time, and then you'll hear, like, 36 other scav voices start yelling. And that's when you know that you're in the shit. But there's going to be a really high heavy chance that Scav is going to have Fort or Kiver. Alright guys, so for tip number 10, it's really not even a tip. But I get this question asked all the time. Uh, not what A couple days ago or a day ago or so, I got a guy that asked me, what do you prefer? AK variants or M4 variants? And if you ask me, earlier in the season, I guess you could say a couple patches ago, I would have said M4 all day, but now you ask me, and I'll have to go with the AK variants. The AKM uh, family is just, it's unbeatable, you know, it, it hits like an absolute truck. Now, in the future, when they add in weapons, like they just now added in the RSS, which is an amazing weapon. It's It's got to be my favorite weapon. Um, it hits like an absolute fucking mule, uh, but if... It's technically like a DMR, so I won't count it uh, as like an assault rifle, but in the future, they're planning on adding in the SCAR H, which is a 7.62 variant SCAR, um, which is going to hit a phenomenally just like the AKM, because um, you can't really compare a 5.56 and a 7.62, so I won't compare them, but as the game stands right now, I do prefer the AK variants, and I had some questions, hey, how do you mod it, you know, what do you use on your mods? Um, I go two ways, I go bare, or I go full. Um, that's kind of what I call it for myself. Um, if I'm having a bad day and I'm not killing as many people, I'll go bare. Um, but if I'm doing really well, then I'll go full. Now, just to show you guys kind of what that is, I'm just going to go ahead and buy... One of my favorite guns is the AKMS. I, I absolutely love it. I love everything about it. So, I'll go ahead and just buy one right here. And then I'll go ahead and just buy uh, just a regular AKM. Because I'm sure that's what a lot of people use also is just a standard AKM. Now, before we leave Prapper, there's a couple things uh, that we need to buy. I always roll a suppressor. I don't know if there's a time that I haven't rolled a suppressor. So usually, like I said, I always roll the suppressor. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy Dos Mignanos. Um, and then I always buy the butt pads. Because they're really cheap, I mean they're super inexpensive, and all they do is add, right? So I always buy the butt pads. So, so far... We can go ahead and throw the butt pads on both rifles. Oh, sorry. You gotta take off the bullshit compensator. And throw the suppressors on there. Now, this would be a bear, um, which I have actually ran before. Most of the time, though, I will throw on a, a sight of some sort. My favorite bear rifle to use is I come in here and I go up to Skier, and I buy a couple of things. Uh, first thing I buy is something that he does not... Act oh, yeah, right here. The Tactical Tool of 10,000. I'll buy that. You can also buy the Zenit B33 dust cover. It's just a little bit more expensive. And then I always come into Peacekeeper and I buy a little something called a Spectre Sight. This works for me on any map, any occasion, any anything. I already had one, but that's fine. And I'll always throw it on the AKMS. This would be my rifle. I would be done modding. This is exactly how I would take it out. Just like this, the Spectre D. And if I'm not going to take out the Spectre D and I just want to roll it kind of how it is, then, oops. 
this is how I'd roll it. Just like this. Suppressor with the butt pad is the only thing I mod for my bears, or sometimes I'll put a tactical tool of 10,000 with a specter side on there, and that's it. Now, this guy we're gonna mod a little bit differently. We'll take this one to be my full rifle. So, I usually leave the stock on there. You can decide to throw it off, but I usually almost always leave it on there. Other than that though, strip her down. Strip her down completely. Then we're gonna go in here, and again, the Spectre site is usually my go-to choice. We're gonna go in here to Skier. We're gonna go down. I always buy the Zenit uh, RK3 handle, the pistol grip for it. And depending on what I'm feeling, most of the time though, I'll just buy a mag pull. And I like to go black, but whatever you fellas would like to have. Now, I'm just going to go in here and I'll just go ahead and show you guys. It doesn't take much. And now, technically, you have a modded rifle. There's really not much more you need than a better uh, pistol grip and then a nice actual angled foregrip or vertical foregrip, whichever one you decide to choose. And then, of course, like I said, I would probably throw on a tactical tool of 10,000 and then a Spectre sight, or even if you want to go with the more clean version and get the actual uh, 33 dust cover with the rail on top. But again, I will show you guys what you can do as far as modding goes. Come in here to skier once more. Let's go somewhat up to the top. It'll be near the MBSS. It's called the ME Adapter for AK Systems. You're going to want to buy that. Then you're going to want to scroll down here because he actually sells Colt buffer tubes now. Buy that and then buy your choice of MOE stock. This is if I'm going to go really full on the heavy side of it. And this would be my fully modded decked out AKM. Uh, I don't usually put anything else on there. Uh, you can if you want, if you like, uh, if you're somebody that likes a lot of laser sights and you do want to toss something like that on there. Um, a really good, uh, I like to go vertical grip since most of the time I kind of post and snipe. But you can buy this. You can always buy the charging handle because that literally does not hurt you at all. But I, like I said, I usually go a vertical grip. But, again, whatever you would like. And then, you're going to want to uh, scroll down here and you're going to want to find something called, boom, the B10M foregrip rail mount. So buy that. You're going to toss it over there. Again, you can just toss this baby on there. It works on any AK variant system. Toss that off. Throw the B10 on. Okay. And this B10 allows for multiple things um the first thing that it allows is not just an moe grip handle like this one was uh you can actually throw like a vertical grip on there or whatever else you want and you can also throw laser sides in the top and both sides if you so choose or flashlights again i don't use flashlights or laser sides so this really doesn't affect me i'm fine with the mag pull um, with the angled foregrip on it, but this is another approach that you can take and this would be a fully modded gun These are the weapons I run right now alongside the RS ass on the left side of the screen You guys see that's these are my go-to weapons uh, AKM s is usually what I roll and you can do the same thing and toss this shit on here just like that But this is what I roll bear Full all right guys, so that's gonna pretty much do it for the 0, 0.5.0 helpful tips and just knowledge video because um, I know a lot of people didn't really get to uh, get a chance to get to that end gear before the patch uh, came out and before the wipe happened and now there's even better stuff at the end gear so hopefully this will help you guys get to that and uh, just before the video ends I want to show you guys just one small clip of the RS ass uh, just so you guys can get it in some of its glory before the montage video of the RS ass comes out uh, but without further ado like, subscribe, share if you want to, and as always, enjoy. There were many of them over there.
had to have been desync, bro, because they're not even looting me. Like, they've already pushed the gas station. There's no way they think they killed me, because I fucking ran. I died in front of the warehouse that you walked out of. Dropped both of them. They were pushing gas station. <sighs> they probably thought that's where I ran, because I'm fucking... I, like, go, go look for that warehouse where I died. I do this for my father, who I've only seen from time to time in my dreams. I do this for you. I do this for my mother, who's finally clean and no longer a fan. I do this for you. I do this for my sister, my wife and my kids, cause they part of the team. I do this for all the naysayers.